Steve, good morning, everyone. I'm going to talk to you about the Evolute system, which is a punctal plug-based plug drug delivery system. When we look at technologies like this, we believe there are five kind of critical success factors. How easy is the device to place? How easy is it to remove? Does it pose cosmetic issues for the patient? Or is it easy for the patient to identify? How tolerable is it for the patient? What kind of elution profile do you get? And can it be used in multiple disease states? And when we stack up the Evolute against these, we believe that it fits as good or better than anything else that's in this space. Our device takes uh, just seconds to place. It's easy to remove. It's cosmetically invisible, yet it's easy for the patient to identify. It's very tolerable. There's a consistent drug delivery profile, and we can program that, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. It can be used in multiple disease states. Once the device is placed, the drug only elutes into the tear film. We accomplish that because we have a solid drug eluting core. We wrap that in a polymer sleeve and then seal it at one end. So basically, it's a one-way valve that only goes into the tear film. Physicians are obviously familiar placing punctal plugs. Once the device is there and placed, there's a, a consistent and stable uh, surface area that's exposed to the tear film. And that's very much in contrast to some of the bioerodible technology where that uh, surface area is constantly diminishing. The picture on the lower right is a picture of my eye. I've had one of the devices in my eye for seven months. No one's ever uh, been able to identify it, but it's easy for me to show them once I just lower the lid and show them where it's placed. Uh, let's talk about retention rates. This is retention rates from two uh, multi-center U.S. studies and 180 subjects. The week four retention rates with our device are at 98%, uh, week eight at 97 and 96%, and by week 12, we're still at 96 and 92%. So our retention rates are really good. This is a short video of an insertion. Uh, the procedure can be done either at the slit lamp or just leaning the patient back. It's an L-shaped plug, so once it makes the bend in the canalicular space, the physician can actually feel it lock into place and lock into position. So we have really good retention rates. It's easy to insert. Uh, what's the comfort and tolerability look like? This is uh, from that same study in 180 subjects. This is visual analog scoring of tearing and comfort, where zero is no response, and 100 means it's intolerable. The baseline is a pretreatment uh, rate. So we're at 19 for both tearing and comfort. You get about a 2 or 3% increase in tearing through the first uh, four weeks. Then it returns to baseline uh, by week eight and week 12, respectively. And that's been my experience with the plug. After seven months, I still don't even recognize that it's in my eye. So how broadly can you use uh, this platform? We have formulated the drugs that are highlighted. Most of our clinical work has been done with latanoprost and glaucoma. We've generated animal data over the last uh, 12 months that suggests that traviprost will work better in this delivery system. Uh, we've also looked at olopatidine and uh, allergy. The current focus of the program is on the anti-inflammatories, diflupredinate as a steroid, and nepafenac as a non-steroidal. We're looking at both of those for post-surgical inflammation. And obviously, we think this would be well-suited for dry eye down the road. There's a strong intellectual property position with this technology. 82 global patents have issued. There are 91 pending applications. Two of our U.S. patents are authored by my friend Jean Dewan, and they read, use of ocular implants to deliver a therapeutic agent to the eye, either placed through the punctum or between the sclera and conjunctival tissue layer. So let's turn to some of the elution data. This is Nepafenac. Again, we're, we're uh, going to be uh, developing this for post-surgical inflammation and pain. The uh, drug is very potent. The minimum target microgram for delivery is at one microgram. And we specifically designed this formulation to have a high burst corresponding to the first seven days after surgery. So we're able to achieve about a four and a half times greater drug load during the first seven days. In the second seven days, which is more of a steady elution profile, we're still in the two and a half times uh, drug elution range. And when we look at the active metabolite of this molecule, which is called Amphenac, we're looking at aqueous humor concentrations, and this is a very potent molecule with a targeted IC50 rate of only one nanomolar. And we expect that we'll have a 20 times greater drug load during the burst phase of the solution profile and still a 10x time greater drug load during the second week of the solution profile. So we think this program has a very high probability of success. 
and we're looking forward to getting this into the clinic next year. When we turned to diflupredinate, the steroid, with this program, we also wanted a high burst, but we also wanted the elution profile to taper down similarly to what patients would receive after surgery with an eye drop. Uh, the target elution rate is at one microgram per day. We're able to achieve about an 8x times that during the first week, and during the taper phase, we're still at the 3 to 4x range. So we believe this program also has a very high probability of success. I'll turn briefly to glaucoma. Most of our work has been done with latanoprost, and with that formulation, we achieve between a 1 and 2 microgram per day elution rate. With travaprost, we're able to achieve an 8 times greater rate during the first week and a 5 times greater rate during the second week. We tested these short-term formulations in animals and looked at change from baseline and intraocular pressure. And with Travaprost, we were able to receive or achieve about a seven millimeter decrease in peak IOP lowering versus with Latanoprost, that peak was only at the five millimeter range. And this is a slide of our clinical data that I showed last year that shows the correlation between the animal data and human data. This is with Latanoprost, we showed a consistent five to five and a half millimeter decrease in pressure over a 12 week period of time. All of this leads us to believe that Travaprost should perform better than Latanoprost, and we're looking forward to getting that program into the clinic uh, next year. Summary of benefits, there's a wide range of compounds that we've already formulated with this technology. It's a flexible drug delivery profile. If we want to burst, we can engineer that. It's truly non-invasive. We get a steady elution rate, unlike eye drops. Uh, it's a very comfortable device, excellent retention rates. It's cosmetically invisible, yet it's easily identifiable by the patient. It's preservative-free, a passive system for patients. There's favorable reimbursement, strong IP protection, and a favorable cost of goods. So I want to thank you very much for your time.